So are you saying that if I have, let's say, a hypothetical wife and that she commits sexual immorality, I cannot divorce her and be free from the marriage? Hmm, is that true? From my understanding, you believe in eternal security, correct? Yes, I do. And so my question is, if we have eternal security and we're, we're truly saved, does that mean that God then, then violates our free will? Like, could you then reject him one day or stop following him? Or did you lose that ability to freely choose otherwise? Let's relate this to marriage, Ledger. When someone gets married, you've made a decision till death do you part to stay with the person you're married. When you've done that, you've made a free will choice, but in a certain sense, you've also given up some of your free will, right? I mean, mm -hmm. when I asked my wife Stephanie to marry me and we got married, that put a complete damper on my dating life. True. But I freely got into the relationship and by God's grace, we're still married after 35 years. Although, although like all married people, when you put two broken people in one relationship, there's always gonna be trouble, right? I mean, let's be honest, it's, it's, it can be difficult. But the same is true when we accept Christ. We've made a free will decision and then we've been sealed with the Holy Spirit. So we are saved, and that's my view on it. Now, some Christians think you can lose your salvation. It's not a test for orthodoxy, which side you come out on. But it seems to me from John chapter 5, where Jesus says, he who believes is passed from death into life, from that point on, you have eternal life. You don't get eternal life when you die. You have eternal life when you believe. If you have eternal life when you believe, how could you lose eternal life? You can't. So in my view, once saved, always saved. You can also go to Romans 8. When you look at Romans 8, and Jack's going to get there probably by 2029. 20, okay, so I agree with him when you made a... When you actually decides to get married, you made a free will choice to get married, which means that it's as an own free will. At the same token, because you made that choice to get married, you are now bound. You basically kind of like lost your free will, not as a human being, but as in that dating life. You cannot be good out there and try to flirt with women and do other things with the opposite sex because you have that, that part of your free will, you have now given it up which I agree with him on that part. Um, and he made that, that uh, allusion with, if you accept Jesus Christ and you baptize and you are sealed by the Holy Spirit, you can no longer use us to the salvation. I also agree with him on that one because he said that's his view on it, not the Bible's view. Because the Bible does not teach that when you decide to um, believe in Christ, that you can no longer decide to renounce Christ. Okay? So, but here's the problem with that marriage analogy. So, let's say, hypothetically, I have a wife, okay? And we are married, of course, and she decides to go and commit sexual immorality. Now, is that not ground for me to cut that marriage and no longer be married to her? Because if Jesus said you can divorce if it's about sexual immorality, that means if my wife decides to commit sexual immorality, then I can actually say I'm going to no longer be married to you which means that free will that I had given up, I'm taking it back because now I'm no longer married because she had 
broken the vows. It is the same way with us and God. We, we hear the message, we believe in Jesus Christ, we baptize, and God gives us His Holy Spirit so we can walk in the Spirit. But if we decide one day, you know what? I want to go and then I want to kill somebody. I want to lie. I want to fornicate. I want to live according to the flesh and not to the spirit. That is us saying, God, I no longer want to be in that marriage with you through Jesus Christ. And I'm going to break that bond. Which means, funny, we have the free will to leave. If anybody tells you, oh, once you be baptized, you are saved because you've been um, sealed, like sealed by the Holy Ghost, and you can not end now. You have lost your free will. Let me tell you something. This is not true. And I think this is one of the easiest ways Satan has deceived most people. Believing that once they receive Jesus Christ, then they are forever saved. You know what's funny? Um, do you remember in the book of Hosea? When God asked Hosea to actually marry a harlot? Okay, let me actually if I can find it. There you go. In verse number 2, Bible says in Hosea chapter 1, Bible says, When the Lord began to speak by Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go take yourself a wife of harlotry. What is a harlot? It is somebody who sleeps around. Imagine you married a harlot. Why did God do that? Verse number three, verse number two. Go take yourself a harlot, a wife of a hollow tree, and children of hollow tree, for the land has committed great hollow tree by departing from the Lord. So, did the Jewish people have the free will to depart from the Lord? Yes. The same way, we have the free will to depart from the Lord. So the idea that, oh, you know what? Um, once I have got married, I am forever married, is the same way. Once you believe in Jesus Christ, you are now saved by the Holy Spirit, and that means you are once saved, always saved. I agree with him because he said that's his view. Bible teaches something totally different. Bible teaches that anybody can actually decide to leave God at any moment. Even I could choose to no longer walk with God. I can say, God, I see in the world people are living a better life than I am. I'm going to go to the world and say, why would I follow God? Now, he mentioned John chapter 5, right? John chapter 5. And I'm pretty sure he's talking about verse number 24. But let me, let me, let me give you guys the back story of that. The whole story is Jesus is talking, Jesus healed somebody on the Sabbath. And the people were asking him why he did that. And then in John in verse number 24, that's when Jesus said, now, first thing first, Jesus is talking about, you know, honor the Father and, and the Son, and then he's talking about life and judgment all through the Son. But the chapter is not just about passing, um, it's not just in verse number 24 where it says, he who have believes, he who believes, he, he who hears my word and believes in him who has sent me has it, has if everlasting life and shall not come into judgment but has passed from death to life. Jesus said clearly, shall not come to judgment. Why judgment? Well, Bible keeps on going to say, the hour is coming when the dead will hear the voice of God. So, it's not now. It's when Christ comes again. There will be a judgment when Christ comes again. 
And those who actually, first thing first, you have to believe, right? Because he also mentioned Romans 8. Well, you have to believe, that's true. But once you believe, Romans 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, which is true. And I wished it stopped right there. But what does it say next? Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Meaning, you cannot be... People, please, read the whole chapter. John chapter 5 and Romans chapter 8. Read the whole chapter. There, there is no condemnation on to those who are in Christ Jesus. But you have to be walking according to the Spirit, meaning the Holy Spirit, not according to the flesh. Because I can say I believe in Jesus and I'm like a murderer, a thief, a liar, a rapist, a sexual immorality, a sexual immoral person. What if I hold on? What is what is what is the work of the flesh? Well, let's go back there. Galatians chapter 5, verse number 19. We read the whole chapter. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of outbursts of wrath. Selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelry, and the like. What does that mean? Well, funny. If I decide to believe in Jesus Christ, but I'm like lying all the time, I'm stealing from people, I envy people, I have jealousy, I have hatred for people, I have hatred for people. Would you think that I'm still gonna be saved? by living according to the flesh? Come on. I cannot believe people actually believe that once saved, always saved. I cannot believe. And I think that's the one way that Satan has used many people so comfortably to lie. Now, he probably be a devoted Christian who truly believes that, but it's a deception. Because when you take one text out of the whole chapter to say, oh, Bible says this, you can make it say whatever you want. That's why when he said, this is what he believes, I'm like, oh, okay, I agree with him. That's what he believes. He even said how the Bible teaches. He says what he believes. And I just showed you, first thing first, even if you believe in Christ, if you do not walk after the flesh, if you do if you walk after the flesh, you're not gonna be saved. The Bible teaches that throughout the whole Bible. If you are married, man. Oh Lord, these people. But again, they don't wanna read for themselves, they want to ask questions. And then they, why don't they do like the Bereans, who whenever they, they, they heard the word, instead of just believing what they said, they went back and studied to find out. Why can't they do the same, Lord? People, listen. The idea of one saved, always saved, might sound good. But it's a deception. Because if you are walking after the flesh and not after the Spirit of God, there is no way you're going to be saved. Even if you say, I believe in Christ, no way. No way. And stop, please, stop using one little verse and say whatever you want to say. You see, in chapter 8, I want you guys to read the whole chapter and see if it is true that one saved always saved. 
By the way, the first chapter, the first verse already said those who there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk after the flesh but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that I was weak through the flesh, God did sin by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Da -da 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 -da. But if you read the whole chapter, you're going to find out. You can't be living. Okay, you know what? Let me, let me actually go to verse number um, 8. Verse number, I'm going to now move forward. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the faith, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal man is enmity against God, and for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Which means, I could say all day long, I believe in Jesus Christ, if I do the work of the flesh, I cannot please God. Which means there is no salvation for me. Does that make sense? Anyway guys, I must stop it right here. I must stop it right there. Hope you guys understand this one. And I'll see you guys again. Bye for now.